Hello, hello, hello. This is uh, Gresh from uh, Blue 16 Media and CB Nation, and I'm going to be presenting to you today on how to kind of create your podcast. Um, I have a lot of slides that I'm going to pack in a lot of information, and, and I'm going to give you some kind of leave behinds at the end so you know exactly uh, what you can do to kind of help leverage your podcast. But one of the biggest things um, that I usually talk about is like you are a media company. So whether you have an organization, you're an author, um, you're just an individual trying to get your name and information out there. You really want to have what I call a media company mindset. And specifically, I'm going to talk related to podcasts for this, because I think so many times um, we get overwhelmed with all the different opportunities that are presented to you. So before I, I hopped into, you know, all the different aspects of that, uh, what I wanted to do was just kind of give you a little bit of information about me, talk about uh, what's going to be to follow um, I'm going to just touch on some of these aspects, introduce you to me um, so you can learn a little bit more about me, uh, go through kind of like the media company aspect specifically related to podcasts, how you can leverage your podcast to go to a different level. I'm going to break down each of the steps of the process, and then um, you'll be able to kind of find out more information on how to learn even more about podcasts. So again, my name is Gresham Harkless Jr. Um, I have a digital marketing company. Uh, called Blue 16 Media. We provide services, web design, SEO services uh, to basically help business owners to get their name out there, increase their visibility. Um, I often say visibility is the name of the game. I'm local to this area. Uh, so I grew up in Woodbridge. I live currently in Alexandria. I went to school at Georgetown and Howard University. Um, and I've been around this area for as much as I can remember. So um, I also graduated from the uh, Young Professionals Program from the Leadership Center of Excellence in, Ale in Arlington, Virginia. I was recently um, uh, selected to be one of the 40 under 40 uh, recipients in the Alexandria Chamber of Commerce and have a daily podcast, have loads of content and information that I provide for um, entrepreneurs and business owners as well. So that's just a little bit about me. And when I talk about this media company mindset, I wanted to kind of uh, rewind the clock a little bit, go back to when I was about 10 years old, my dad was in the military. So he went to an entirely different country for a year super uh, frustrating time, uh, painful. I cried, um, you know, taking him to the airport, coming back to the airport with my mom. But um, one of the things that I um, didn't really know, but it came to my fruition a little bit later was that I had a problem um, where my dad was in a different country and this was pre Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, all of these technology tools that we have at our disposal, it kind of required um, a different way to look at things to be able to uh, connect with my father, which was one of my goals. And as a nine or 10 year old, I wanted to uh, be able to um, generate some revenue, who knows what for, uh, and some money just to probably buy, you know, potato chips or, or video games or something like that. So with that being said, I started what eventually became my first media company. And uh, what you see at the very bottom is you'll see different podcasts that I reference um, that you can go to and listen, and you'll get all that information again at the end um, of this uh of this uh, video so you can learn exactly how to do that. And, uh, but I created this media company because I wanted to connect with my father. Um, so I basically created a family newspaper. We sent it in a care package that we sent it just about every month to my father. Um, so within it, I would get all the information that was going on in our family. I would send, we, we would send basically um, that package to my dad and I would sell the subscriptions uh, to my family members and, and close friends of the family. So. The reason that I bring that up is because so many times uh, we are trying to solve certain problems and, and trying to figure out how best to solve those problems. There's different tools and ingredients and things that you can do to make that happen. And again, I'm going to focus, laser focus on one of those, which is definitely podcasting. So with that being said, again, this is kind of a split between some of the things that I do. Blue 16 Media is my digital marketing company. So I try to connect with as many entrepreneurs and business owners as possible, uh, people that are trying to increase their visibility. And one of the best ways that I do that is through CB Nation, which is daily blogs, daily podcasts, and video content, all helping to help entrepreneurs be successful by telling their stories and providing them resources to be accept, uh, successful. So I talk about this media company mindset, and I wanted to break down some of these six steps. And again, I'm just going to touch on some of these because uh, what you'll see is step three, which are, the, which are the ingredients, which is the bulk of what 
people spend time on. That's choosing exactly what are going to be um, your ingredients to put into your recipe, so to speak. And the reason that I say recipe is because I, I say you really want to think about your favorite dish and, and kind of think backwards. Um, a lot of times we go to the grocery store and we just go not realizing exactly what we want to create. But what I want to do is kind of change that, you know, during this presentation and help you figure out what are the three things, um, what are the things you're trying to accomplish and answer three questions. And by then, when you go to the quote unquote grocery store, you have a clear understanding of exactly what you're going to choose to make that happen. And the reason that that's so important is because most people from a podcast standpoint, just jump into recording podcasts. And while there's definitely a time and place for that, when you're able to do it strategically to help you to reach your goals, I think podcasting and a lot of other platforms go into an entirely different level. So you see the acronym recipe. Um, you're going to figure out your marketing plan. You're going to get your foundation in place. You're going to figure out those ingredients. One of those that I'm going to laser focus on is going to be the podcasting. And then you're going to pick and prepare what those are, put it in the oven and enjoy um, that product that you have. So most presentations, I start out with this uh, video. This is a picture of me skydiving. Uh, I'm super afraid of heights. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do was face that fear. So I went skydiving um, some years ago. Uh, but I always remind myself of this because with this podcasting, with your idea of starting a podcast or maybe wanting to start a podcast or maybe even leveling up your existing podcast, there might be some fear, some apprehension that you have to deal with. I think that it's to our detriment if we do not look Look and acknowledge that. So I wanted to all, always kind of show this aspect. And with that being said, I'm going to introduce you to Carrie, as I kind of touched on. Carrie is somebody who has a, is 45 years old, is looking for more speaking opportunities online, offline. Uh, he started his consulting business about six years ago, recently published a book. Uh, he has special programs for leaders to become transformational leaders. Uh, he likes to focus on large companies, loves to talk and speak with people, loves music, um, and 10 years of experience in nonprofit management, a background in a sales agent, um, served in the military, and has a website and started a blog um, doesn't maintain it, but he uses Facebook and LinkedIn professionally. The reason that I went into all of those different aspects um, is not to just read uh, the, the presentation, but to really drill home how important it is to know who you're trying to target uh, with, with your goal. And as you see, as I go through this presentation, you'll see why that creates such a strong foundation, whether you're doing podcasting or any other platform, or you decide that you want to do a vlog um, and, and create a YouTube channel and do it that way, you have so many different opportunities but you want to lay uh, the foundation by understanding exactly who you're trying to target um, first and foremost. So three things I know about Carrie. Um, the very first, Carrie wants to reach more people, get his name out there. Again, the name of the game is visibility. The second thing, he wants to generate more leads and opportunities. Um, and then the third thing is Carrie is extremely overwhelmed. He or she can be overwhelmed uh, by all the things he's supposed to do to kind of market and get his name out there. And specifically for podcasting, there is a lot that you can do. But again, you want to be very clear on what your goal is. So as an organization, as a business, as a leader in this business world, you really want to understand that it's a process to be able to drive those opportunities to you. So you have um, an inverted pyramid, which gives you that idea, like most people realize, don't understand that everybody who listens to your podcast is not necessarily going to become a customer. Everybody that listens to your podcast is not necessarily going to become a subscriber. So you want to understand that if you're trying to increase your visibility, if you're trying to increase the number of subscribers, whatever and however you define success, you want to understand that you have to look at your traffic. You have to look at the things that you're going to do to drive uh, the people to your, your podcast, to subscribe to your podcast. If you have a book, maybe your podcast podcast, maybe your, um, your traffic is going to come um, and those leads come from your mentioning of your book through your podcast, but understand all those different aspects are important, but you really uh, have to increase your activity level from a traffic standpoint. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, when you're going to the grocery store, you're figuring out what exactly the ingredients are. And I usually say it's as simple as pie uh, to figure out exactly what these ingredients are. And I'm just going to touch on some of these. Again, you'll be able to find out more information if you really want to do a deep dive through the entire kind of 
aspect of what it takes to build a media company and really uh, transition that into your podcast. But this is just an overview of some of those things and the steps by which you do that. And these are the biggest three questions that I always say that you should really look at. Um, understand your target market. As I touched about, uh, as I touched on, and when I when I spoke to with you about Carrie, you really want to know that this is the person that you want to have come through the door again and again and again. It's entirely, um, I think, one of the most important questions that you want to not only answer one time, you want to continually drill down and find out more information about that person. You want to be honest about the resources you have, time and money. If you're starting your podcast and you're bootstrapping it, maybe you're honest and you say, hey, I'm going to edit my podcast myself. If you understand that you have the budget for it, but maybe you don't have as much um, money at your, or as much time at your disposal, maybe that's going to be a different way that you do that. So understand that sometimes when you start out and you uh, bootstrap it, maybe you're going to do the things you don't necessarily want to do in the very beginning, but as you reach success and you define exactly how you reach success, you're able to allocate more uh, resources to, um, or external resources to hiring somebody or bringing somebody else on. Um, with that being said, I always ask this in my podcast um, is, uh, what is your secret sauce? And the reason I your secret sauce is this essentially your unique selling proposition your differentiator what you feel kind of sets you apart uh the real thing that you want to kind of keep in mind is that when you understand exactly what your secret sauce is you're going to make sure that you leverage that and that comes out first and foremost in, in a lot of things that you do because that's how you're ultimately going to break into the noise but with that being said uh this is a little bit more about the marketing plan i touched on those different aspects hey you want to answer these questions who's your avatar uh, what exactly your goal looks like and be very clear on your goal these are just some options of what you can do maybe you're going to uh, use your podcast as a way for you to promote your brand as a business to get and drive more opportunities maybe you're using it as a networking opportunity as I do as well. But again, getting very clear on what your goal is, is so important. Uh, who are you targeting? Your target market, like I said, um, is an incredibly important. And everybody's listening to this radio station. So you want to keep that in the back of your head. What's in it for me? So when you're understanding who you're targeting, make sure that you're providing true value for who they are and what exactly they do. Are you really giving visibility and opportunity for these uh, these people that you're trying to, to target? So with that being said, I'm really big into, uh, when I, I usually reference sweet potato pie because when you make a pie and you get the filling and you get all those things, you have to have your foundation there. If you've ever tried to pour sweet potato pie into something that isn't a crust or something that can hold everything together, it completely goes everywhere. It's, it's a mess. This is the reason uh, that I think it's so important when people ask, do you have a website for your podcast? Do you have a blog for your podcast? Do you have a campaign? I think that it's important to do that. You don't necessarily have to, but again, make sure that you're thinking about it strategically. If you're not doing that, there should be a legit reason why you don't. And a lot of times with these podcasting platforms, often they will include a website for you. And you know, there's pros and cons of doing that, but understand you want to have that crust in place to drive everybody over to. So understand that is an, an, an incredibly important. The next step, step three, is figuring out your ingredients. And I touched on so many different ingredients that you can do. There's social media, there's uh, blogging, um, there's um, uh, Google ads, there's Bing ads, there's um, just so many different things, social media platforms uh, like Instagram, TikTok, uh, you name it, there's ingredients out there. But the reason that I'm so um, kind of locked in on those important questions in the very beginning is because again just like going to the grocery store if you're hungry or going to the grocery store if you don't know what you're going to buy you can get overwhelmed by the amount of uh, choices that you have so it's so important to really drill down on the ingredients that you're doing and if you do and you figure out that hey i actually want to start a podcast this is something that i've always wanted to do i've heard that i wanted to do that is the ingredient that is going to be my main ingredient. So I always say pick one, pick or choose one or two ingredients. Um, this is the ingredient that I'm going to focus on uh, primarily today. So first of all, I'm going to start into what is a podcast, how exactly I define what a podcast is. I'm going to go into the steps into launching your podcast, the best reasons or some of the reasons I should say, um, some of the software you can use, how you can come up with a name, uh, where you should host your podcast or where you can host your podcast, uh, some, some um, ways to market your podcast, equipment you should have, 
way you record it, best practices, even if you don't have a podcast, but once you get on a podcast and get your visibility out there, which is another uh, kind of a hack within a hack. And of course, the things that you can use in order to be successful with your podcast. So we start everything out. Uh, what is a podcast? Um, the podcast is basically a way in which you can get your information out there through an audio form. So a lot of times people use podcasts and they define podcasts in, in a multitude of ways and in different ways. I believe that as I have spoken about media or content in general is basically just getting that information out there in audio form. Now, a lot of times people have kind of twisted the idea of a podcast and sometimes they'll say have a, they have a podcast, but really they have a vlog, which is a kind of a video a blog essentially. So the, the biggest thing that you want to know that differenti differentiates a podcast from um, like a, a, a YouTube channel, so, so to speak, is that you usually have an RSS feed that you have to um, pull from a podcast host. And I'm going to touch into, into podcast hosting in a little bit, but the idea is that you have an RSS feed and it allows you to send out that audio information. Um, and it usually also allows people to subscribe to that uh, through a multitude of ways. But the biggest difference, and I think the biggest kind of misconception I see and hear is that people say, I'm going to start a podcast and they do a um, a YouTube channel and it's a, it's more of a vlog. So they're not really in, in the definition, the true definition of starting a podcast. So I think it's so important to kind of understand that. But when you get a podcast host um, and you go to these different platforms, you're able to really uh, drill down and, and get people to subscribe and start to do some of the things that I'm going to talk about. So if you are potentially starting a YouTube channel, you decide that that's going to be your ingredient. Keep in mind that all of this information may not necessarily be specifically uh, for you. So what are the success of starting a podcast? Like I mentioned, um, you know, those, those first three questions, you really want to have a purpose. I think so many times people go into podcasting and they just hear that they should have a podcast, but they don't have a purpose on what it is that they're trying to do. They're not really clear on what success is. Do you have a book that you're trying to promote? Do you have... Um, a, a platform that you're trying to get more people to, to drive to? Are you uh, potentially having an event? Have a very distinct purpose on what it is that you're trying to do because what's going to happen is you're gonna make sure that that is highlighted throughout the episode and throughout the content that you're doing, whether that be the intro or the outro or whatever that might be, but you wanna be uh, clear on those things. Um, Another big thing is, is you want to have kind of like a theme artwork, um, you know, intro and outro that I mentioned as well, too. But that information is so important because as a um, podcaster, as an eventual podcaster, as you're, as you're definitely doing or, or an expert podcaster, you might even be, uh, you want to make sure that you have that coherence through what it is that you're creating. Um, one of the big things that people um, aren't clear about is they do a lot of the work that it takes to create a podcast, which it, it is not something you can just sleep and really do unless you have the partner or you have the production company that's going to be helping you out with that. Uh, but the big thing that you want to understand is that you might want to reference your podcast or your digital marketing company, in my example, or your book during the podcast. So one of the things that I do is um, we have CEO podcasts and everything's powered by Blue 16 Media because it's a way for us to kind of promote the digital marketing company and people can go and find out about Blue 16 Media. But the, the goal is really to do outreach for our digital marketing company in addition to providing value for subscribers. And I'm going to touch a little bit more on how exactly I leverage that um, equipment. I'm going to touch on the different equipment, the different tools that you want to consider and make sure you have. Again, um, these are the six steps that I that I mentioned that you should go through. And I'm going to touch and, and say something that um, a lot of people sometimes can get overwhelmed with a lot of these aspects. But in reality, just like I talked about with skydiving, sometimes you just want to go up in the in a plane and, and jump out with guidance, as much guidance as you can. But I think so many times people don't get started, which is where uh, a lot of the problems kind of come from. Um, software and hosting, you want to make sure that you have the software and hosting in place. Um, and I'm going to touch on that 
that as well too. I referenced the hosting in the very beginning. How are you going to edit the podcast? So you want to make sure that you have your editing and then you want to know how you're going to get the information out there. How are you going to get the downloads? How are you going to get people interested um, in your podcast and what exactly you're doing? So best reasons to start a podcast. I say the best reason is pretty much any reason. Um, if you want to basically rewind the clock uh, into what I talked about before, how are you defining success? When you figure out exactly how you're defining success, it doesn't matter if you have a million subscribers, if your goal was to uh, promote your, um, your book that's coming out and nobody has purchased your book. That's not success. Uh, it, or maybe you need to pivot, but understanding and defining that success will determine exactly what your steps are. As I mentioned, for me personally, networking has been a really huge aspect for my podcast. I've gotten the opportunity to network and connect with people I never would have uh, ever met before, um, but I was able to do it because rather than saying, hey, do you want to talk to me? Can we set up a time? I, I asked, hey, you know, I see you're doing phenomenal things. Would love to have you on my podcast. And I get that as an opportunity for us to connect a lot. And I've also been on other people's podcasts as a result of that. So understand there is a network opportunity behind that. There is um, kind of the, the revenue generating opportunity. So if you specifically have a very strong niche, you can potentially start generating revenue from day one. That's why going back to what I was talking about with the avatar, if you can really paint a picture of exactly who you're targeting and you can find potential businesses that also want to have that exact same connection, that's going to be huge. I actually had somebody on my podcast and she did a podcast about the, the spouses of people in the medical industry. So like dentists and doctors, she had a very specific niche and she was able to get advertisers um, largely because she has such a strong niche and there were people trying to target uh, those uh, specific people. Um, so like people that dealt with stress, potentially trauma, the, the stress that it came with having the debt of medical, um, of medical education, a lot of these spouses had to deal with a lot of those things. So understanding that that was something that was of relevance to a specific target market, she was able to get subscribers very, or, or get advertisers very quickly. So understanding each of those different aspects, but again, understanding uh, that your North Star, so to speak, is going to be what your individual goal is. Um, I think that's one of the things that you want to stay true with and stay strong with. So coming up with your name, what are you going to name your podcast? Um, you can take two different aspects. Um, I often have uh, questions that I ask on our blog about uh, why did you, why and how did you come up with your business name? The thing that you want to do is you really want to get clear on, you know, those th first three questions that I talked about in the very beginning, but you also want to understand what is your podcast going to convey? Um, do you want people to know that, hey, this is the digital marketing podcast? Do you want people to know that, hey, this is the plumbing one-on-one podcast? Do you want to basically position yourself in the podcast uh, in this specific way, because maybe as a plumber, you've been working for 30 years and you realize that you want to start doing consulting? Maybe as a business coach that has been um, in the business for 20 years, you realize that the greatest opportunity you have is to teach other coaches uh, about uh, how exactly to coach because you have a mastermind program that you're, that you're launching. So just understanding all those different aspects is, is incredibly huge. And, I, and like I say, I often use the phrase power by um, because I think it gives an opportunity to show um, and be transparent, honestly, in that this is being supported by this. This is, uh, you know, powered by, this is supported by, uh, you can potentially always in the future gives that opportunity to replace that if you so desire with an advertiser or somebody that's going to sponsor your podcast. So uh, the next thing that you want to do is there's different ways to um, host your podcast. I mentioned that in the very beginning. I think that's the biggest distinguisher between what's an actual podcast is you have podcast hosting. It's not just uploading audio files to um, your website. It's actually having a podcast host. They have an RSS feed and they allow you that opportunity uh, to really um, 
to really uh, have people subscribe to your podcast. And there's loads of different podcast hosts and they each have kind of pros and cons. These are some of the ones that I kind of focused on. Um, and I'm a big believer in um, allowing the opportunity for you to be able to host on your site. So there's Podbean, um, anchor.fm is completely free, but understand if you do have uh, the money, I would say the budget to pay uh, whatever the, the the number might be, like uh, for Podbean, you're looking at maybe a couple hundred dollars for unlimited hosting. Anchor is completely free, but with that, you don't have as much um, access to um, the, the RSS feed and things like that. So if you want to kind of move from anchor.fm, it's not as clean as it is from other uh, podcasting platforms, but there's Lipson. Lipson is how most of the, the, the bigger name podcasters will use uh, for podcasting. It's also going to be one of the more expensive ones uh, because it does have that brand recognition. Um, you have Blueberry. Uh, Blueberry uh, syncs greatly with WordPress sites. So if you have a WordPress site and you want to not make it uh, very complicated to be able to add the code or take that extra step, it integrates directly with your WordPress site. SoundCloud is, a, is another one as well too, but there's many, many more Buzzsprout. Um, and, and there's so many more that are that are popping up that provide you that opportunity. Uh, I had a, a podcast guest on my show and she's starting one that has gamification in and she's local to this area called Potopolo. Um, Padopolo, I'm sorry. Um, and that allows that opportunity for you to, to provide a little bit more of an engaging experience. So there's so many different ones that you can have, but you want to do your research. And again, I have more information um, that I'll give to you after this as well, too. How are you going to market your podcast? That's something you want to be really clear about. Um, there's uh, once you create your podcast, you want to submit it to podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. These are basically ways in which people find your podcast. So if you really want to think about it, um, and, and, and the reason that people use the phrase podcast directories is because you have your podcast, you're going to have to basically drive people potentially to your website or to wherever that you want them to go to listen to your podcast. But just like people go to social media sites to promote their organization or their business or what they're doing, podcast directories are kind of the same way because people go to podcast directories to find podcasts to listen to. Now, I still believe because of kind of like the limited search features within most of these podcast directories, you will probably, if that is your goal, get more opportunity by leveraging it from your own website. Um, but understand that there's people that are just going through Apple Podcasts. Spotify is a huge uh, game changer. They actually own anchor.fm as well too. These are ways that people search for a podcast. So you wanna make sure that you are aware of that and Google Podcasts as well too. And there's other ones um, that you, you wanna make sure that you submit your podcast to. And, and again, I have that list um, that you'll be able to get uh, after this. And in social media, it's still a great way to kind of brand and get your name out there. Um, again, uh, I talk a little bit more in this You Are Media Company about choosing what ingredients that you want to focus on. And one of the things that you do is you figure out from your avatar, what are the potential uh, social media sites that are really great. So as I mentioned, Carrie in the very beginning, loves singing, loves music. Maybe he's going to spend more time on TikTok if that happens to be the demographic that works for him. But when I hear somebody likes music, I almost think that, hey, are you really integrating TikTok? And even if your target mark is not there at this time, potentially they will be in three to five years. So maybe it's not your main way to generate opportunities and generate visibility, but it could be that opportunity where you're a first mover in the, in the future. So Website SEO. There's also loads of Facebook groups as well too. You can join to ask questions, find out more information, but really get your your name and information out there. Uh, these are the 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 uh, tools that you need as well too. As you see, I have a podcast microphone as well, and you you'll also see that I have a. Um, a, uh, and that should be a pop filter, a mic arm. Uh, you can do soundproofing to your room as well too to, to make sure you can actually create like a sound shield as well, which allows you to not have the sound echoing from the different walls and things like that. You can get mixers. Um, I also use portal equipment. So I have a Zoom recorder when 
uh, before, you know, everything that happened with COVID, you were able to, uh, you know, do face-to-face. So I had a Zoom recorder where I did face-to-face interviews. And the big thing was with the Zoom recorder is it allowed you to split the tracks because as an editor, you want to be able to have two separate tracks. And I think it's great, especially if one side um, has loads of uh, background information, background um, feedback. Um, where another side doesn't, you don't have to kind of re, um, re-record the entire interview. You're able to kind of uh, take that person out or, or, or record or um, uh, mute them for that specific area. But these are the, the, the different things. Um, you really want to make sure that the microphone that you have and, and things are in place. But one of the big things I want to reiterate again is don't feel like you have to be overwhelmed with the different options that you have. Choose what you have. I started my podcast specifically just going on free conference call and having somebody else call in and hitting the record button. You really want to understand if you want to have the best possible quality ever, if that's your thing, then absolutely you want to make sure that you do a a tremendous amount of investment in that. But if you're using it as a way to network or as a way to potentially do or or create other opportunities, then maybe you don't necessarily have to um, invest in that depending on what uh, your resources and where your resources are. So how should I record your podcast? For me personally, I use Zoom. Um, It allows me to do audio and video or just audio. Um, And I have the ability to split the tracks. So there's a additional step you take to basically split the tracks within Zoom through its settings. Um, But there's other opportunities. You can do it through Audacity as well too. Audacity is a free software that you can download that allows you to to really uh, download, to get really um, high quality uh, podcasts um, recordings, but it also allows you to edit within the podcast, which is another big thing. A uh, Zencaster was another one that I use. I often have this as a backup just in case Zoom doesn't go well. Uh, Skype allows you the ability to do that. You, um, can add, um, a, a different, um, a different software to it as well too that allows you to do that Squadcast, um and there's many many more opportunities those are some of the, the the four or five that i feel like are the best ones that you want to kind of look at but again there's different and other opportunities there's ones that are kind of popping up as well too that you want to get up to so you don't want to start a podcast what you really want to do is hop on other people's podcasts um one of the things that you want to do is figure out exactly what they want to do when it remember when i said like what's in it for me, you really want to understand what's in it for this podcast host, why are they trying to do the podcast. So you really want to to understand that, understand the psychology, understand like how what it is that you do can be transformed into what is valuable for that audience. And when you're able to make that connection and you're able to kind of quote unquote pitch yourself to that person, that also provides a tremendous opportunity uh, for that to happen. So biggest thing, show up early, be prepared, have your water, uh, do your meditation, whatever you need to do to be in the zone for that podcast who could you want to be absolutely present and aware of what exactly you do get an idea of some of the things that you can say or don't say can you curse can you not curse um how long is a podcast going to be uh what exactly those uh those questions look at and then from a um a host standpoint if you're having people on your show understand a lot of these things are what you're going to want to say in the very beginning i personally have about three or four different ways that i basically drill home the exact same thing i use a scheduling link i use acuity acuity um allows you to be able to send emails prior to the actual interview so that helps out because a lot of times i'll send the questions and sometimes we'll people will say hey i don't see the questions but the questions are not only sent to you via email they're also added to the um the uh the reminder that you hit and i also ask before i hit record if the person wants to have the questions in front of them and this just under this it's just obvious to, to kind of keep in mind that people often are busy and you want to try to provide as many ways for them to be able to get the information that they need um, as well. So um, ask if you have any questions, if it is possible, if you're not going to do and build the rapport right before the interview, maybe you can you know hop on a call and just at the very least to, to hear each other's voice, I think helps out um, to make the interview go better. So if you're going to be a guest on the podcast, see if you can. If you can't, that's completely fine, but make sure you listen uh, to those podcasts. And like I mentioned, you want to make sure that you record in a quiet quiet space. But biggest thing I say is you really want to understand what's in it for me. This is exactly what uh, people want to do. So what to accomplish. And 
here are some other hacks that you, you, you can use. Um, again, I have a resource at the end that you can kind of use and see even more of these uh, potential um, opportunities in, in these uh, apps and, and software that you can use. Uh, Fusebox is a great way for you to embed uh, using WordPress um, a lot of the um, of the um, podcast uh, episodes that you have. It also syncs with otter.ai. Well, it does, I'm sorry. You are able to upload a transcript through Fusebox from tools like otter.ai that you use, that you see at the very end. And otter.ai is basically AI transcription. So you can actually transcribe your podcast. And one of the big things that I actually had a, um, a hearing impaired uh, person on my show. And one of the things she said very specifically is that she would love to listen to more podcasts, but podcasts are not transcribed. So her and even her friends uh, really miss out on that opportunity to really uh, enjoy um, the podcasting platform. So understand that, say that that is something that's important to your avatar or important, or, or even maybe directly your avatar, that is a step you should definitely uh, make sure you take. Headliner is a great way to create audiograms. Um, Audacity, like I mentioned before, is completely free. And, and again, I'll have the links and information so that you can uh, find out more about all these different hacks. And with that being said, like I mentioned, these are all the different ingredients you can use. Obviously, we're talking about podcasting, IGTV, email marketing, YouTube, social media, SEO, SEM, offline, things that you're doing, maybe going to networking events. Obviously, the offline is maybe a little bit shifted now. But again, these are all the different ingredients that you can use in order to get uh, your name out there. And the pick and prepare it. So make sure that you're picking and preparing maybe one or two of these ingredients, and you're really going to focus on that. As I usually say, you put it in the oven. Uh, so that means you start to execute on what exactly you do, but make sure just like with any time you're cooking, you're going to check and make sure that what you're doing is helping you out. Are you getting that information out about your next book? Are you getting people booked for your event? So if not, maybe you're going to have to go back through and, and execute and choose any different ingredients or use them uh, in a different way. So understand that this is an entire process. And uh, like I mentioned, keep working to perfect it. The first time you create it, it may not be um, a, the, the perfect sweet potato pie may not be the perfect apple pie or or a chocolate cake, whatever it might be your thing or your, your dessert. But keep in mind, you continue to work on it, you continue to perfect it, it is a process. So with that being said, um, I wanted to uh, ask you, you know, what media company are you building today? What podcast are you starting today? If I can be any help, definitely please let me know. This is what Carrie actually does. So Carrie uh, is primarily focused on LinkedIn, but experimenting with TikTok, as I mentioned, because he likes music. He also uses LinkedIn to be a guest on podcasts. He actually searches for podcast hosts um, through LinkedIn as well, too. Uh, because he loves to speak, he started a podcast called From Military to Real Estate Age, Nova's Guide to Real Estate Age, Real Estate um, to, to, to real estate, um, a way for him to build his authority. That's how he defines success. He tells a story, shows his expertise, talks about injury, industry trends, um, also interviews, uh, professionals. And the thing that that provides is the potential referral partners are on the podcast, builds a stronger connection so they can potentially refer him, um, or her. So answers any questions that he has from different clients and all the episodes go to the blog and are shared on his YouTube uh, page as well too. He has an ebook that um, is for free on his website called How to Build a Team of Transformational Leaders. So that's basically it. Um, basically, like I mentioned, I have a daily podcast. It's all powered by Blue 60 Media. Every single day you get a new episode. You can find it at ceopodcast.com. Um, and uh, the, the big thing for me is it's been a great way for me to build connections, build relationships. It's also helped me to build my authority. One of the reasons I'm even able to kind of give this presentation today. So understand that your podcast and how you define it and what exactly you do with it can be, can, can be identified by you. But I hope that I gave you somewhat of a guide in order to make that to happen. And with that being said, I keep saying it over and over again. Um, this Alice in Wonderland quote, if you don't know where you want to go, it doesn't matter what path you take. So don't be like that. Make sure we understand exactly where we're trying to go and what we're trying to do. So hope I could be of any help. This is more information about some of the things that I work on as well, too, um, as well as some of the contact information and ways that you can get a hold of me as well. If I could be of any help or any service, please, of course, let me know. And with that being said, the last kind of final gift that I mentioned that I talked about as well is helpforpodcast.com forward slash in for 
G. Um, that has a lot of the resources that I talked about, has loads of kind of content and information to kind of help you out as well too. Uh, so if I could be of any help or of any service and, and please, you know, let me know, we can book a time and do a consultation, but I hope that is of some help and, and some clarity. Uh, there's loads that you can do with your podcast. It's one of the, the, the more robust ingredients that you have um, at your disposal. So just remember that. And, and like I said, in the very kind of beginning, just get going, just get started with your podcast. Don't get hung up on all of the different things that you could do or you couldn't do or you need to have in the, in the right place at the right time. There's never a right place. There's never a right time. Just get started. So with that being said, my name is Gresh again, signing out, and I hope you have a phenomenal rest of the day.